Hey guys, welcome to Functional Print Friday. If you like design and using 3D printing to solve real world problems and not just printing trinkets, this channel is for you. I'm excited about this week's video because it's our first guest design. That's right, a subscriber to the channel, Mike, submitted a design that solved a problem that he was having mounting his uh, IP camera. And it turns out that I actually have the same IP camera that I had just bought uh, to replace uh, an older one that I had and I hadn't yet figured out how I was going to mount it and let me show you what I mean so this is my old uh, IP camera and you can see here this is Ethernet these aren't the type that plug into like a big box with a bunch of cameras uh, these are you can have one or you can have you know hundreds of these uh, they're just power over Ethernet and then talk back to a central program um, like Blue Iris and this type uh, I was able to essentially just run an Ethernet wire, so I drilled a small quarter-inch hole uh, through my wall where the camera was going to be, and that wire routed through this hole here, and then I would put a jack on the end and plug it in, and done. Uh, these new ones, really great quality cameras. In fact, if you're looking for um, a new IP camera, uh, these ones from Amcrest, this is their 4K camera, and they're cheap too. They're only like I don't know, I think 110 bucks. I'll put a link down in the description to these and Blue Iris, which is what I use for my personal um, IP cam security system. Uh, but I paid, I mean, these are older, but these Toshiba ones, I paid like 800 bucks a piece for these uh, years ago. And this is, I don't know, like three times the resolution. It was 110 bucks. Anyway, the problem I'm having with this is look at this gigantic cable we have on here. See, there's no jack on the camera, and it's smaller. I get that. That's nice but it has a breakout for power and a breakout for ethernet. Now, I don't need to use power because I'm using power over ethernet, but I don't want to cut this guy off either. I don't want to risk shorting anything out. And if I want to use this camera in a different application in the future, it'd be nice to have it there. On top of that, even if I do cut this off, I've still got this huge connector here that's substantially larger than even the jack on an ethernet cable, let alone the thickness of just the cable itself. Now what I'm on about here is if I want to not have this wire, like I could route it here and just have it hanging down the wall and the ethernet cable coming out unplugged into this, but that's rather unsightly. I want to have, I want to see just the camera, right? Problem is there's no room back here to stuff all this into. Like it doesn't physically fit. There's just, there's no way to get it all up in there. So now I've got to go back and where I have an ethernet cable coming out of the wall, again, just through a quarter inch hole, this guy, I've got to go drill a giant hole to stuff all of this up through. Um, and that's probably three quarter of an inch. I'd have to drill the hole uh, to get this guy to fit in there. Um, you know, cause it's not that thick down here, sure to be fair, but this isn't detachable. I got to drill a huge hole to put this through and it's actually why I hadn't put this camera up yet. Um, but Mike came up with just a, a plate that goes on the back of this to space it away from the wall. And they came up with an ingenious way to mount it on surfaces that are not flat either. So like outside on vinyl siding. Um, and I think he's got one for corrugated steel like you'd have on a pole barn or a garage as well. So let's go take a look at his design and see what he came up with. Oh, I almost forgot. Let me show you how this guy actually mounts to the wall stock. So it's a little confusing looking at the whole thing, but this comes apart. Uh, and you can see that there are four holes in here. So you'd mount this plate to the wall first uh, and then drill your big hole, like a three quarter inch hole in the center and then route this wire up through that hole. And then this goes in place and is held in position with a security Torx bit. Okay, and here is Mike's design. And the way that this works is the, the back portion of the camera, that plate that I said mounts on the wall or ceiling first, basically sits on this face here and the four screw holes uh, on the camera mounting plate align with these four screw holes here. So instead of using, you know, shorter screws to just attach the camera plate, you're just going with a longer screw that sandwich this all together. And your ethernet cable comes up through the square section of the center and enters through either of the U shapes on the sides here. And there's plenty of room inside this box. So realistically, uh, your cat five could come through the center here um, and you could have quite a bit of extra. So if you're working up on a ladder, you could connect everything up um, go back up that ladder and wrap everything around here um, on the sides uh, and still fit it in place. So he's also got uh, a couple of uh, adapters for this. 
that's sandwiched behind it. So, okay, so we've got the camera on this face. So these two adapters go on this face back here. And what these do is if you're putting up a camera on the side of your house with vinyl siding, uh, this takes up that gap so you don't have uh, just a gap that would be in this shape uh, or this shape here uh, behind the camera. And this one here does the same thing for the stamped uh, sheet metal uh, that you typically have on a lot of garages and pole barns uh, that have sort of that shape to them. So again, you don't have that gap behind the plate for, for bugs and things to get into um, and weather as well. So Mike, great job. Uh, I love this design and it's just fortuitous that you, you, you sent this one you did because um, I had a similar idea and just hadn't actually executed it yet. And this is, I couldn't have done better. This is uh, wonderfully done. Um, thank you for submitting it. If you've got a design that you'd like me to take a look at, go to fpfdesigns.com, click on contact, and I will email you back and we can exchange the STLs, videos, pictures, whatever works so I can understand how it works and I might just feature it on the channel. If you liked this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. I put out a new video like this every single Friday that features a design of my own or a user submitted design that either makes something better or solves a problem that is encountered around the house or the shop. If you're in the market for a new IP camera setup, I will link to the specific camera that I'm using and that Mike is using down in the description below and also the Blue Iris software that ties everything together. Guys, thanks for watching and I will catch you next Friday. Mm -hmm.